As Jamaicans prepare to ring in 2022, health experts are warning persons to avoid large New Year's Eve events as the country is now experiencing the fourth COVID-19 wave. There have been calls for a cancellation of the 1 a.m. curfew. The Medical Association of Jamaica, MAJ, says people should take the necessary precautions to lower the chances of being exposed to COVID-19. MAJ President Dr. Brian James says individuals should be mindful of how easily the Omicron variant spreads. We are really calling for us to not go out tonight to, to ring in the new year. Do it at home or do it in very small groups. Um, and try and spare the, the medical system, you know, the crush that will eventually come if people, if people get very sick. We just have to hope that they don't. And Dr. James is expecting the COVID-19 positivity rate to soar past the 32.5% reported yesterday. I believe that we are in the midst of what I'm going to call the O wave, the Omicron wave. And the Omicron wave everywhere that it has gone has been very rapid. It has gone up quite dramatically. So I wouldn't be surprised if the positivity rate goes up much higher. What I'm hoping is that our experience is similar to the South African experience where the hospitalization did not go up dramatically at all. I'm particularly worried about children. In South Africa, the children were affected more than with the Delta wave, and they had more children in ICU and more children in hospitals. So I'm, I'm hoping that that part of the South African experience escapes us, or we escape it. Medical Association of Jamaica President Dr. Brian James. And Dr. James is in agreement with the Jamaica Medical Doctors Association that local COVID cases could be much higher than is being reported. Dr. James says there are several factors which led to underreporting of cases. Because of our unavailability of testing or people who are reluctant to test because they're asymptomatic or madly symptomatic. And we have learned from various jurisdictions, particularly in our meeting with the South African President of the Medical Association, that with the Omicron variant, there is even a higher incidence of underreporting because they found that it was very mild and people either knew that this is what they had and don't need to test or people just denied that they had it because it was so mild and just never tested. But yes, it is underreported, no question about it. Medical Association of Jamaica President Dr. Brian James. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is urging caution in the use of COVID-19 self-test kits, even as his minister begins distribution of the devices to various groups. Dr. Tufton handed over 5,000 test kits to the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association yesterday. However, he noted while the self-test kits can help in detecting the cases, they're not as reliable as other tests. It is important to note that if not administered properly, and this is very critical, the self-test can in fact give false negatives. And while we promote these kits, have to also say to persons that if you have symptoms, if you're unsure, visit your doctor or at least get some doctor's guidance and advice because there are levels of testing in terms of the science and levels of accuracy depending on which level of testing you apply. The PCR remains the gold standard of testing. The antigen test gives the next best bet, particularly for symptomatic persons, and the self-test is the latest addition. Dr. Tofton says the government will initially spend $56 million on kits to be distributed to various sectors. Our intention is to, in the first instance, purchase some 40,000 kits. In the first instance, approximately 56 million Jamaican dollars. This is the Jamaican government. And gift those kits to a range of critical sectors. Another tranche we hope will come after. In the first set being handed to the tourism industry, we will have other sectors that will benefit who we believe, based on assessment, are particularly at risk. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton. There has been another increase in COVID-19 hospitalizations in Jamaica. 
107 persons are now admitted up from 97 on Wednesday. In the meantime, Jamaica continues to record a double-digit COVID-19 positivity rate. The Minister of Health says 329 COVID cases were recorded yesterday from 1,043 samples. This resulted in a positivity rate of 27%. 14 of those admitted are severely ill, while two are in critical condition. Meanwhile, COVID-19 has claimed three more lives in Jamaica, increasing the death toll to 2,473. The latest deaths were recorded in St. Catherine, Kingston and Clarendon. More than 10,000 children in Jamaica have contracted COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic last year. According to data from the Health Ministry, there were 10,382 cases in the 0 to 17 age group from March 2020 to December 28 this year. 13 children were confirmed to have died from the virus during the period. The ministry did not share the number of children who were hospitalized or are currently admitted. There has been a 12th COVID-19 related death in the Cayman Islands. It comes as hospitalizations remain low, with just five COVID-19 patients admitted. One more than was reported on Wednesday. Meanwhile, an update from the health minister revealed that there are now 284 probable Omicron cases in Cayman, in addition to 44 confirmed cases of the new strain. Interim Chief Medical Officer Dr. Artelia Newton reported 68 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday. The total number of cases recorded in Cayman since the start of the pandemic has increased to 8,943. The United States today warned that Americans who are traveling abroad should make contingency plans as countries around the globe grapple with rising numbers of COVID-19 cases spurred by the Omicron variant. The State Department recommends international travel insurance with coverage for COVID-related trip cancellation and medical benefits. The department also noted that Americans two years and older heading back into the U.S. from international travel would need either proof of recovery from COVID-19 or a negative COVID-19 test taken within one day before they are set to return. The State Department said other foreign governments may also have additional COVID-19 guidance for visitors upon entering the country. The guidance underscores the seriousness with which officials are approaching the new Omicron variant, the spread of which has already caused staff shortages and reductions in certain services in the U.S. Health officials say the Omicron variant is highly transmissible, but early data also suggests it may not be as severe as Delta for people who are vaccinated. And the World Health Organization WHO chief says he is optimistic that the coronavirus pandemic will be defeated in 2022, providing countries work together to contain its spread. In a New Year statement, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyes has warned against narrow nationalism and vaccine hoarding. His comments came two years since the WHO was first notified of cases of an unknown pneumonia strain in, da in China. Global cases now stand at 287 million, while nearly 5.5 million people have died worldwide. Across the world, people are marking the New Year, but celebrations are muted, with many countries wanting to discourage crowds gathering. A municipal police officer and his nephew were killed during a drive-by shooting on the Friendship Main Road in St. James this morning. Investigators are now at the scene. Sometime before 8 o'clock, the two individuals are traveling in a Toyota Wish when they were attacked by men traveling in another vehicle. The Toyota Wish crashed into a ditch. The municipal employee and his nephew were pronounced dead at hospital. A 48-hour curfew has been imposed in sections of the Kingston Central Police Division following an upsurge in major crimes including murders in recent weeks. The curfew started 6 o'clock yesterday evening. Ten-year-old Gazaria Tyrell was among three persons killed in the Kingston Central Police Division between Wednesday and yesterday.